Thank you for joining us this week on The Tongue with Dr. Mike. I'm so glad you're back with us again. Make sure you're going to our website, thetonguespeakslife.com, and you're accessing all of our podcasts there. You'll be able to check out our other projects, including In My Father's House. If you're not part of In My Father's House yet, go on Facebook, look it up in my father's house join there get get into the conversation there look at the encouragement going on from everybody get involved with prayer cast get involved with what's going on with our other shows pillars of heaven with jb and leah we just had a great episode with joanna from prayer warriors on there make sure you're going to the tongue speaks life.com and getting all this together and pretty soon we'll have a new avenue and a new channel for you and a new website coming soon Cure International. Go to the tonguespeakslife.com and get involved with Cure International. There's a link right there. You can check out everything that they've got going on. Special project for October. Check it out. I'm going to talk about it more next time, but I want you to go check it out right now. You can donate right to the Cure, right from the Tongue Speaks Life. You can donate to the Tongue right from there. Uh, everything is encompassed right there on the tonguespeakslife.com. Make sure you're going there good so as our family keeps growing i just want to say again welcome back to everybody from wherever you're listening to it god bless you um this family is growing constantly thank you god for that wide reach you know that program's taking it's continuing to go there's a couple of our our messages going out they're hitting over the hundred thousands of people uh god bless everybody today we're going to talk about something that um it is is a little more serious um and it's affecting all of us right now today's topic is facing an illness uh you, you know as i chose this topic um somebody actually in my family just is on the brink of finding something out and uh you know it, it's easy to talk about illness when you're not sick right it's super easy to give advice when you're not experiencing that issue yourself right you don't know Uh, You don't know how to handle the situation until you're really faced with it. People don't want to hear a lot about what you have to say about it if if you're not going through the same things that they are. It's different if you're listening to someone who's gone through the same thing and they've come out the other side. You know, just like in life, we take advice from the people who have a message, whether it's their inward or outward image. It appeals to you in some manner. I can tell you, you know how to keep your head up and push through your illness or your issue but if i'm not going through it or or have gone through it well that might determine if you listen to me or not or how much you pay attention to me i can tell others how to positively look for the bright side of losing your smell and taste from covid uh you know and what long covid suffering means because i have it and i suffer from different things you know heartbeat and uh that's a different story but can i relate to someone who's suffering with aids or cancer no i can't you know i know people who have these ailments but but i don't you know does that change your view on where our healing comes from does it change your perspective on how you live day to day probably i mean i know from my journey uh I have, uh, you know, suffered severe burns and the melting of flesh from boiling water. And and with a certain level of confidence, I can speak on illness and pains, but each person has their own journey, right? It's important to remember that this world is under a curse, right? It began from the fall of man. This world has sickness. It has disease. It's one of the consequences of disobeying God and his instructions. But that doesn't mean it's outside the hand of God at all or, or his control. Remember, sickness and disease bow to the name of Jesus. At any moment, if it's God's will in your life, you can be healed. I know people in my family that were diagnosed with deadly diseases, and by the grace of God, that sickness disappeared. You know, the same sickness that that took the parents of some of my friends. You know, my father claimed the healing over 30 years ago. You know, disease vanished. Doctors stunned. You know, I have friends of mine that were laying in hospital beds with hoses and masks and uh, tubes sticking out of everywhere, you know, that helped them to breathe, you know, and at the name of Jesus and the pouring out of prayer, those tubes actually, you know, the hoses burst off, uh, you know, and exploded from his face from to the wonder and amazement of the doctors and the nurses, you know, to see full recovery. You know, I know cancer patients that have zero cancer. 
I, you know, I know all about healing of past issues and relationships, uh, how hearts that were once cold have opened and warmed. You know, the list goes on and on. But the important thing to remember is that there's nothing too difficult for our God. And wow, yeah, no other religion, religion can claim that, you know, healing through a Savior. You don't hear those stories, right? Jesus surrounds us with hope. You know, does this mean if you're sick, you can get healed? Yeah, of course it does. You know, if it's God's will to heal you, then it's going to happen. Does that mean, uh, you know, God doesn't love or want to heal you if it doesn't happen? Of course not. Remember, God has a bigger plan for everything. It may seem confusing to us, you know, especially if we're suffering and it's usually the stage where, you know, your anger sets in. You know, we ask God for healing and if nothing changes then you become angry with God. You know, sometimes we're made to go through certain things because God knows that's the only way to get your attention. You know, I've seen families moved over the loss of people. I've seen them brought together. I've seen them moved apart. I've seen changes constantly happening. You know, what we need to realize is we serve a living God, a God who heals. You know, one of the names of our God is Jehovah Rapha, and that means the Lord who heals us, right? Jehovah's, you know, the actually the word for Yahweh, uh, and it means Lord and Master. It's the promised and proper name of God. Rapha means to heal or to make healthful, right? So together, Jehovah Rapha means the Lord who heals us. God is the great physician who heals his people. This this truth in God's name applies equally to not just, you know, physical ailments, it's emotional and psychological, the, the physical healing as well, you know, not not just to individuals, but to nations alike, you know, so let's jump into the Bible, let's see what it says about healing, and we, we all know, or, or we have heard of Psalm 23, most people unfortunately hear that at funerals, um, Psalm 23 is a Psalm of David, it says, the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We are God's sheep. Here the Lord's seen as the great shepherd who tends and takes care of all his sheep. His rod and his staff are, are comforting, right? Imagine you're a sheep out in the field and you're lost. The first instant that you see the shepherd or the, the top of his staff, you get that instant feeling of safety. This verse reassures you that, you know, even though you're going through a dark valley in your life, that your shepherd's with you. Uh, you, you, you don't need to fear. You shouldn't fear. Remember, you're, you're not given that spirit of fear. You're given that spirit of power. And as we get into some of these other scriptures, I want you to realize and, and dig into these verses and, and listen to what they're telling you. You know, look, look at some of the instances where Jesus was healing those who were suffering, right? So Jesus heals many. Let's go into Mark chapter 1, verse 29 and 34. It says, as soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they immediately told Jesus about her. So he went into her, took her hand, and helped her up. The fever left her, and she began to wait on them. That evening after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door, and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons, but he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. All right, that part we'll get into on a different, um, a different topic because that's super important there also. But here, you know, Jesus is not just instantly healing a, a simple fever, but a, a more in-depth illness, right? It says the fever left her. People began bringing the sick and the demon possessed, to, you know, straight to the house. So it says the whole town gathered. If you were sick and you heard that there was someone on the street that was healing people, would you not run to them? It says that Jesus healed many who had various diseases, right? Mark 6, 53 to 56 says, when they had crossed over, they landed and anchored there. As soon as they got out of the boat, people recognized Jesus. They ran throughout that whole region and carried the sick on mats to uh, wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages, towns, countryside, they placed the sick in the marketplaces. They begged him to let them touch even the edge of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. 
and all who touched just the edge of his cloak were healed. How crazy is that, right? The power of Jesus, right? James chapter 5, 14 says, is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Right? See, here we're given instructions on what to do when we're sick. Right? You call the elders of the church to come pray over you. Get anointed, uh, anointed with oil in the name of the Lord. And it says that prayers offered in faith will make the sick person well. This is a powerful instruction for all of you who are sick. If nothing else, have people pray over you, right? Keep your eyes on Jesus, right? So as we stay in the Bible here, we're going to, let's do a couple verses here about healing, right? Matthew chapter 9 says, Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness. Every disease and sickness, right? Is there anything impossible for God? No. These healings are talked about throughout the Gospels, right? The people knew their healer. Surely he took up, you know, our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, we are healed. That's Isaiah 53, right? That's one of the most recited verses when it comes to sickness and illness. By his wounds, we are healed. You know, of course, there's a bigger picture here of suffering and dying for us, but he took our pain and bore our suffering, right? And Jeremiah, it says, Here, heal me, O Lord, and I will be healed. Save me, and I will be saved, for you are the one I praise. In Mark chapter 5, verse 34, he said, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. Psalms 103 says, Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. Luke 13 says, And a woman was there who had been crippled by a spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and could not straighten up at all. When Jesus saw her, he called her forward and said to her, Woman, you are set free from your infirmity. When he put his hands on her, he immediately she straightened up and praised God, right? We, we're not used to seeing that instant healing, you know. <laughs> they are happening, though, you know, through prayer and the laying of hands on the sick. You know, one of the gifts of the Spirit is healing, and, we, and we'll talk about gifts of the Spirit in another episode, but how many people have this gift, right? Do you, do you know of the ones in your church that have this power? Uh, you know, through God, it's, you know, nothing's impossible. It's all possible, Right In the name of Jesus, all sickness must obey. And they are not just physical ailments. These are mental, you know, psychological, anxiety, depression, fear, confusion, worry, all of it. Right? James 5 says, Therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. There's no shame in asking for help. It's important that we share our weaknesses with others so they can specifically pray for what you need. Confession, we talked about as well as how, how important it is to confess with your mouth. There's nothing that God will not forgive. You need to come clean, share, and, and get the antidote for your transgression. The prayers of the righteous are powerful and effective. Remember, you are stepping back and letting God fight the battle. It's you giving up control and admitting you don't know all the answers or, or how to fix it. You have to let God do the work. Matthew 15 says, And great multitudes came unto him, having with them those who were lame, blind, dumb, maimed, and many others, and cast them down at Jesus' feet, and he healed them. How would your faith be if, if you, you know, were laid at the feet of Jesus and he instantly healed you of your illness? You know, what if you were blind and you were taken to this man and all of a sudden you could see for the first time ever? How, how would you feel when you realize that no one could explain to you what the color red was, but now you can see it, right? Would you, would that make you believe to give your life to that man or, or would you be thankful and, and then just go about your business and forget, you know, the great things that were done? You know, there, there are many reasons that, you know, you could be wondering what is a good Bible verse for healing? You know, in times of sickness, uh, you could be seeking a powerful healing prayer, or perhaps you're looking for a comforting message for healing. You know, maybe it's your mind during a time of stress. You, you may even be looking for help, or, or, you know, with dealing, it could be a broken heart. 
no matter what you're looking for, rest assured that found in these powerful Bible verses, healing, right? You, it'll help you on your journey. You, you go through a period of healing and, and that period can be, it, it could be confusing. It can be frustrating. You know, whether you're overcoming an illness or injury or mourning the loss of a loved one, you can sometimes feel stuck, you know, with no way out. In times like this, it's helpful to know that you are not alone. While there's no finite timeline for recovery, you know, uh, eventually you'll reach the other side and, and you celebrate that new beginning, um, you know, helping you get there along that way is, is something that needs to be celebrated as, as well. You know, times of healing are also great opportunities for growth, uh, whether it's emotional or spiritual or physical. You know, we found that one of the most helpful places to look for optimistic encouragement through periods of healing is the Bible, right? So here's some more verses. Let's get into it. Psalm 6, have mercy on me, Lord, for I am faint. Heal me, Lord, for my bones are in agony, right? Psalm 41, the Lord sustains them on their sickbed and restores them from their bed of illness. Proverbs 16, gracious words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. Psalm 34, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. The, the Song of Solomon, 1612, it, doesn't, it wasn't any herb or ointment that healed them, but your word alone, Lord, which heals everything. Malachi 4 says, but for you who fear my name, the son of righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. You shall go out leaping like calves from the stall. Back to Psalm 73, my flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. John 14, peace I leave with you. May my peace I give you. I do not give it to you as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled and do not be afraid. Isaiah 33 says, Lord, be gracious to us. We long for you. Be our strength every morning, our salvation in time of distress. Psalm 119, this is my comfort in my affliction, that your promise gives me life. Philippians 4 says, and my God will meet all my needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. Proverbs 17 says, a healing heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. Proverbs 4 says, my son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Back to Psalms 146, the Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. Exodus 23, worship the Lord your God and his blessings will be on your food and your water. I will take away sickness from among you. Isaiah 41, so do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Dear friends, I pray that you may enjoy good health, that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. John 1, 12, 3 John 1, 12, right? Revelation, it says he will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. Second King says, this is what the Lord, the God of your father, David says, I have heard your prayer and I've seen your tears. I will heal you. Jeremiah 17, heal me, Lord, and I will be healed. Save me and I will be saved, for you are the one I praise. Luke 6 says, and the people all tried to touch him because power was coming from him and healing them all. Jeremiah 30, but I will restore you to health and heal your wounds, declares the Lord. Isaiah 38 says, surely it was for my benefit that I suffered such anguish. In your love, you kept me from the pit of destruction. You have put all my sins behind your back. Isaiah 57 says, I have seen their ways, but I will heal them. I will guide them and restore comfort to Israel mourners, creating praise on their lips. Peace, peace to those far and near, says the Lord, and I will heal them. First Peter 2 says, he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. Matthew 11 says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Back to Isaiah 40, he gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Psalm 107 says, he sent out his word and healed them. He rescued them from the grave. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. Psalm 147, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Matthew 9 says, Jesus went through all the towns and villages, 
teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness, right? Psalm 30, Lord, my God, I called to you for help and you healed me. Father, thank you for hearing our prayers. Thank you for looking out over your children in these darker times and the times that come ahead. We are at the worst part in history. Your children are still suffering from the curse of this world, sickness, disease. But Father, we know that all sickness and disease must bow to the name of Jesus. Stress and worry and depression and delusion and weakness are all nailed to the cross with your son and the blood of your redeemer defeats their power in their lives. Your word says his stripes, by his stripes, we are healed. Your word says that you heal the brokenhearted. Father, I pray that if it's your will that you heal the people who are listening to this podcast, whether it's a physical ailment or a mental one. Let the word spread out and go forth to all who need it now. Let the chains that are holding them back be broken in the name of Jesus. I pray power and authority over these restrictions in, in your children's lives. I pray that you heal them and restore what the enemy has stolen from them. Let the doctors be amazed and confused. Let the family stand and rejoice. Let all of this bring glory to your name. You are Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen and amen. Thank you, Father God for loving us so much he sent your son to die for us and because of him we have a direct path to a direct relationship to god the father it's so easy to find you the word is near you it's in your mouth and it's in your heart that is the message concerning the faith that we proclaim if you declare with your mouth that jesus is lord and believe in your heart that god raised him from the dead you will be saved that's it for it's with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it's with your mouth that you profess the faith and are saved. That scripture says anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame, right? Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. If you're listening to this again, I'm telling you it's not by accident. You're meant to hear this message at this moment, at this time. No matter how you came to hear it, it's meant especially for you. Things are going bad in the world. They're going wrong in your life. Scary things are all around you, and you feel like you're losing grip and you're starting to, to give it all up, right? It's so easy to lift your head up and see that God's got his arms stretched out for you. It's so simple that praying that simple prayer and, and all you have to do is repeat it. God, I know I'm a sinner. I know I can't do this anymore. I know that you're God and you sent your son Jesus to die in my place. He took the penalty of my sin and on the third day he rose to glory. He's coming back again. Jesus, come into my life. I accept you into my heart. Forgive my sins. Become the leader in my life. I turn everything over to you. Guide me and teach me as I grow to learn more about you. You pray that simple prayer and you will be saved. It's that simple. If you need a Bible, reach out to us, please. It's, it's that simple. Go to the, the tonguespeakslife.com. Believe in your Father God who heals. Jesus heals. God, we have Jehovah Rapha who heals us. Believe in God believe in that his will 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 take precedent in your life keep your prayer get to church have the elders pray over you and have a, a powerful prayer chain of people and, and keep your faith solid i can't wait to see you next time thank you so much <laughs>